Thank my you. dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Gospel of John, chapter 8, from verse 10. Sorry, Gospel of John, chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10. Gospel of John, chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10. And the caption of tonight's contemplation will be, Expose and disgrace the witch-hunting parasites around you. Expose and disgrace the witch-hunting parasites around you. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your word of servant, stand before your presence to thank you for giving me the opportunity to call upon your name tonight on behalf of my brothers and sisters. We have an appointment with you, Father, and we are praying and craving your divine indulgence to expose the witch-hunting parasites and witch-hunting spirits hovering around this, the families of the children of the light. When their arrows come, Father, crush. When they come in the midst of wolf, Jesus, you already understood the kind of way they come to us. You told the apostles, I'm sending you in the midst of wolves. You understand their practs. Father, teach us to know them before they come. Your children are in the world full of tarsi tarsi. There are a lot of many chameleons around. But your discerning spirit will help us to discern every spirit. To discern every witch hunting parasites around us. Many families were ruined in the past because they couldn't understand what was going on in their family. And so, Father, tonight I present before you my brothers and sisters in this line. Some families are still struggling, struggling to survive. A lot of attacks upon attacks, both in dream and daylight. They don't understand why things are moving the way they are moving in their family. Many people have helped people in life and they get into trouble. Many people are in our life respectively, but they become parasites. Father, may we be able to discern the parasites in our life and be able to run away from them. Not everybody is powerful. Not everybody is strong to face the devil. We pray tonight for your blessing. We pray tonight for your spiritual strength. We pray tonight for your spiritual discernment so that your families around who know that you, my God, you are in our midst, so that we shall know that that Emmanuel we know and speak and call upon his name is with us. It hasn't been easy for many families. How can someone be walking with a friend without knowing that the friend is a wolf? How can someone be walking with someone without knowing that the person is a chameleon? How can someone be reaching out to people, doing good, and they turn around to blackmail and betray the person? It breaks people's hearts. It breaks people's hearts, Father. Many are still having emotional trauma because of the so-called friends. Many have not recovered from what has happened to their children. You entrust your child to someone and that person abuses your child. You allow your child to go somewhere and your child comes back less a man or, or, or woman. Father, forgive. Father, bless many families that have been wounded in many ways by the parasites in their life. Many families that have been wounded by many parasites and witch-hunting spirits, 
where they are walking. Father, let this night be a night of healing for many people. Some are still traumatized because of the past. Some are still struggling to survive what they went through and some what they are still going through. It hasn't been easy for many of them. Some are afraid to talk. Some are still shy to talk about their experience. And they are dying in silence. Father, reach out to those people tonight, Father. May they receive emotional healing, spiritual healing, physical healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Many have waited for blessing upon blessing to come. And they have been verbally abused by the people that are supposed to comfort them. Father, send your Holy Spirit upon them. To comfort them and to be with them. Let them not feel abandoned by their friends. Send genuine friends to them. Send angels walking among men and women. You were able to send your archangel Raphael that led Tobit and Tobias and Sarah. You can still do it in our own time, Father. Let tonight be another night of healing for such people. Teach us how to discern before they strike with their arrows of witch hunting parasites. They have their plots, but we have our Jesus. They have their arrows, but Jesus have the weapon. We pray for divine intervention in our life. We pray for divine intervention. Apart from you, we can do nothing. You are the vine, we are the branches. We anchor our faith and hope in you. Save us, Savior of the world. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, like I said, our reflection tonight will be from Gospel of John, chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10. He says, All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. Verse 9, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in all its fullness. That's my Jesus. That's my Messiah. That's my master planner. He cannot deceive us. All that came before me were thieves and robbers. How many people have been your friend in the past and this present moment? What are they in your life? Who are they to you? Are they like thieves and robbers? Do you listen and follow them? What about your children? Can someone trust you? Jesus said, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. How many people have you used to enrich yourself you will make advertisements and tell your brother or your sister, oh, if you join this business, oh, you will be rich. If you call another person, 
and call another person, then that person you make points and make points. Not all the business works. You have to discern which one to enter, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm not condemning anyone. But you have to discern. There are a lot of things now. Do not use your brother or your sister to enrich yourself and you ruin your brother or your sister for life. The little saving he or she has, he entrusted it into your hand and you start telling stories. Why will you be the parasite that will cripple this business or the money of your brother or your sister? Why will you be the saddest in the life of your brothers or sisters? Why will you be which haunting your people? I pray that the Lord will help us to discern every soul that comes to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We have to be very careful. Jesus is warning us today through the scripture. Not everything you see in this world is the way it is. If you are driving on the way, you may see mirage. And you think that there is, uh, uh, there is uh, water in the, uh, along the road. As you are approaching that place, there is no water on the street. There is no water on the road. It's just a mirage. It looks like water, a pool of water. But when you are approaching that place, there is no water there. It becomes a mirage. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to learn how to disgrace the witch hunting devil in our life. Devil is the enemy of progress. Devil is the parasite of faith. Devil is the canker worm of fidelity. Devil loves distraction. And devil loves destruction. He distracts you and destroys you. Devil loves distraction. And devil loves destruction. Devil works with your enemies to cripple your success. Be very careful. So tonight, we have to disgrace the devil with the word of God and our faith in the Lord. Determination is the key to success. It takes the strength and courage of a child of God to seek for help. Jesus has conquered Satan and has taught us how to disgrace the devil and his allies. We have Jesus on our side. Some people are parasites in your life. You have to expose them. How can you expose them? You have to know them. You have to know them. By their fruit you shall know them. When you cannot, when you cannot gain anything spiritual or good from someone, why must you be attached to that person? You, rather, you have to be the light to that person. Don't allow, it. no one gives what he, has, he or she has not. If someone has nothing to offer you, offer somebody spiritually. Don't, don't just follow somebody sheepishly. You have to discern. If that person has nothing to offer you, then you as the light offer something better. By so doing, you have converted your brother or your sister. But when you just admire nature, may ephemerals, you may be deceived. For instance, you don't know how to smoke, and you start associating with someone that smokes, and that person offers you a, a, a stick of cigarette. Instead of saying, no, I don't smoke, you say, let me test. What are you testing? Are you a chimney? 
Rather, you tell the person, no. Thanks for the offer. I can wait for you when you finish your smoking and we'll start talking. And go far away from that smoke. Because second-hand smoking is dangerous. If the person wants to be converted, then you can help the person to move on. You can ask the person, what do you gain from these things you are doing, for instance? This too much smoking, this too much drinking. He or she will say, I know. I'm just giving it as an example. Don't allow people to lie in, draw you into what you are not capable of doing, or you are not interested in doing, or you are, you are not used to that kind of life. Don't allow people in your life to be the parasite in your life. That's the bottom line of what I'm trying to explain. There are other examples, but I just want to hit this one. Some people are parasites in your life. You don't gain anything from that person. Not monetarily. But something spiritual. Something that is good that you can gain, benefit from that person. Moral life and so on. If there is nothing there, then tell yourself that you have a whole work to do. That this soul must be converted to Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Become a divine instrument to that person. Don't place yourself at the same level with that person. You have to wake up and don't allow the world to swallow you. Use your spiritual pesticide to attack your, their base. Defend every movement around you and your family. Treat every move as a suspect till you are convinced. I know why I say this. Some people have allowed certain people in their lives and have ended up with lots of problems. You don't smoke weed and they found weed in your, in your bag. How can you explain this to the, the cops? That's another example I'm telling you. You are protecting your friend and you go into trouble. You are protecting your so-called friend and that person hiding from the cops and then put, uh, put weed in your, in your pocket. You don't even know. Or borrow your jacket and you don't even know that that, that, that person used your jacket to go and sell drugs. How do you explain this kind of thing? If they are pursuing that person and they come and search your own jacket and your jacket is full of weed and you never smoke even a day. I'm just giving you examples. Learn how to expose those parasites and destroy the devil inside them. Not condemning the people because some of them need help. But there is something inside someone that is troubling. The person needs help, but some of them don't know how to help themselves. Help them reach out for, for help. Some of them don't want to go. Keep them in your prayer. Reach out to them in prayer. Connect them to the group so that they will be prayed for. And when they listen to messages, they can, they can be converted. Treat every move as a suspect till you are convinced. A young girl so much trusted her girlfriend that she took her to her fiancé. Unknown to the girl, the girlfriend visited the future husband and messed up her love with him. You may not have a strong man and you introduce your girlfriend to the person. And your, your man had no control. What do you expect? She became pregnant for that man. And the man transferred the love to, to her. Ask yourself. What becomes of the person you have ruined? Why must you be the parasite in your friend's life? 
Is this what you are created to do? Or have you sold your soul to the devil? Think about the person you have destroyed with our own future. Think about the person you have betrayed the trust. Don't be the parasite. Don't be the witch hunting spirit in that person's life. Ask yourself, are you the parasite witch hunting spirit that destroys the peace of your friends or your neighbors? What can you do to amend this situation? Look at that young girl. So innocent and naive. Took her girlfriend to someone that was proposing to marry her. Without knowing that every time this guy went to that man. And got pregnant. And they were giving her invitation card for wedding to come. You have to discern the parasites around you. Before you trust, you have to pray and discern before you make a friend. Know where your children are and where they go and who they go with. What can you do to amend this situation? If you have been a parasite in someone's life, pray tonight that the person or family forgive you. Pray that the person or family you have ruined will find inner emotional and spiritual healing. Say a prayer with me now. Jesus. I repent with my whole heart of having offended you and my friend. You can mention the person in your heart. If you are not comfortable mentioning it where you are. Mention the person or people you have already been, been parasites in their life. You have ruined their life and family. Mention them one by one and ask God to heal them. Father, Lord, may you reach out to them for healing. Tell God to reach out to them for healing on your behalf. Tell God to help you find peace again. In the mighty name of Jesus, say amen. If you are the one that is hurting, people hurt you in life. Jesus is healing you now. Take in deep breath and breathe out. Say after me. Jesus, I am hurting and disturbed. Jesus, I am hurting and disturbed. I gave my best in this relationship. But I'm still hurting. Nobody cares how I feel. Nobody understands me. You are the one that understands my feelings. Come to my assistance. Make haste to help me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen somebody. The watch phrase here is never give up. When you think that things are no longer working in accordance with your plan, the devil tells you just give up. You have tried enough. You have to ask yourself, how did you survive all this while? How did you survive prior to being aware of what is going on in your life? How did you cope 
with this entire crisis for many years before now, that will strengthen you to readjust your strategy. In book of Isaiah chapter 45, from verse 15 to 25, the Lord says, Those who put their trust in the Lord will be saved. Those are to be put to shame and disgraced who have been angry against him. But the Lord is telling you, you shall never be put to shame. Even though you have been disgraced in the future and in the past, you don't even know your future. People say that your children will never be anything in the future. But our God created you. He knows and understands you. Your children, their future will be bright, bright and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Just to show you how wicked people are, they are trying to tell you what will happen in your future and the future of your children. I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall never be put to shame or disgraced in your future. And your children shall never be put to shame or disgraced in their future. Their destiny are in God's hands. Their destiny are in God's hands. God is watching over you. Our God created the earth, designed it, and established it not to be wasted. Rather, he designed it to be lived in. Isaiah 45, verse 25. When you get into a tight place and everything goes against you, do not lose hope. Sometimes it seems that you cannot hold on for even a minute longer. Never give up. For that is just the place and time when the tide will turn in your favor, in the mighty name of Jesus. We have the grace of God, but the devil has disgrace. The grace of God will help us, but the devil will always like to disgrace us. God has grace. Devil has disgrace. St. Paul understood the strength in the grace of God. He knows that the grace of God is like a spiritual boost to our faith. The grace of God is our spiritual synergy. It energizes us and empowers us to forge ahead in spite of the turbulence in our life. When you think that you are down, you still hear the voice of grace reaching out to you. St. Paul says, the grace of God is sufficient for us. We shall never run dry of divine supply. Our God is bigger than the ocean. Remember, Elijah was tired of running away from Jezebel. But the angel of the Lord reached out to him. There was a time he was running away from all these false prophets. Jeremiah had his own time and problem too. Moses had his own time. God does not allow his genuine children to go down without winning in the end. No matter how rough it is, in the end you still conquer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Susan was down in the book of Daniel. But God sent Daniel to boost her strength and to save her life. God's grace works with us and through many means we survive. God's grace can empower or embolden someone to stand for, for your testimony. God's grace can walk through someone 
to empower you or embolden you. God was able to use Daniel. The grace of God was with Daniel. And he was able to save Susan. God can use you. God can use your friends. God can use your children to save the family. God can use you as a divine instrument to sustain the family's strength and hope. When the leader of Zarephath lost hope, the grace of God empowered Elijah to intercede and to rescue her. The grace of God diffuses the tension in our lives. The grace of God sustains Daniel in the den of lions. When you are in the midst of wolves, remember that you will never be disgraced because the grace of God will be there for you. It's only the enemies and the devil will be disgraced because they have the same character with their master, the devil. But we have the same character with God and that's why we have the grace of God. GG, grace of God. We have the grace of God. But the devil have this grace. DD, this grace, the devil in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't give them opportunity to ruin your life. The grace of God sustained Daniel in the den of lions. The grace of God motivated David to withstand the threat of Goliath. Goliath wanted to be the parasite for the Israelites. And God sent David to disgrace that Goliath. When God is with you, devil is disgraced. When the grace of God is enormous in you, devil is disgraced. The grace of God will be with you in your difficult moments. A woman that looked for the fruit of the womb for many years was sustained by the grace of God. She had tried every means possible to get to have a child. Nothing prevailed. As they were contemplating to to adopt a child, this woman didn't even know that she was pregnant. She was going to school, she was going doing her work and gradually God was showing and manifesting himself and showing this woman what you have been looking for is already at the corner. It was very funny when she was telling me her story. God put laughter in her face. The woman told me, Father, So God has remembered me. So God has made me to feel the pangs and pain of delivery. So God has allowed me to experience the feeling of pregnancy and delivery. Father, I'm still surprised by God. Father, so I can now answer the mother of a bouncing baby boy. She spent her money trying to see if things would work out well. They tried everything, but nothing happened. When they have exhausted every possibility, God allowed them to have their children in a natural way. <clears throat> the devil could not cripple her. Both, of, both husband and wife so much love each other. They plan everything together. They pray together. They have strong faith in the Lord. 
when things are getting stronger or you're having difficult times in your family, that's the more reason why husband and wife, if you're still together, that's the more reason why you should be getting together. Your love is supposed to be stronger and stronger. Not the time to be haggling and haggling and nagging and nagging. It is the time for you to bond together. This woman called me on the phone and said, I would like your mom to be the babysitter of my child, my miraculous child. I said, Mommy, go. My mom is on this line. God works in many ways. When you think that the devil has, has crippled you like a parasite, you have to diffuse that tension by continuous, to, by continuous prayer and fervent faith in God. I did not want to tell this story when I, I was celebrating my 25 years. I just wanted God to take the glory in this line. The woman that had the hall where I celebrated my 25 years, Brother Walker was alive that day and present. The woman that donated that hall for my 25 years anniversary, she had few, uh, two children and then everything ceased. She requested for prayer. I gave her prayer. I said, God, God will wow you. God may give you an anniversary child. She said, Amen. That was last year. And all of a sudden, guess what? She became pregnant after many years. And God gave her a child. She brought the child on the anniversary day. That was a mystery. And she called her daughter to come and read something for me. I didn't want to explode it every day. I just wanted God to take glory on the line. Not that place, because if I said it, people would be around me that very day. I just wanted to celebrate my anniversary of Thanksgiving. God had done enough for me. I want God to do for others. Why do I say this? For you to know that when you have the grace of God in you, no matter how many years you have waited, no matter how many years you have been praying to God, when the time comes... Nothing will just protect it. No, nothing will prevent you from having that. Nothing, nothing will prevent you from having the grace of God and the favor of God. No man or woman can stop you. No parasite can cripple you. No witch hunting spirit will stop you in the mighty name of Jesus. God works in many ways. Just trust in the Lord. Do your part. And God will take over everything. This woman did not even know that she was pregnant for almost three months. It's like one, not expecting anything, planning to go and adopt, some, uh, adopt a child. So when she became aware of her pregnancy, I mean the one that my mom would go and babysit, she told the doctor to operate her and bring the child out before the child vanishes from the womb. I, don't, I didn't blame this woman. Why? Because there was a time she had twins, and all of a sudden, the, the twin just disappeared in her womb. She had a lot of series of miscarriages. Devil is a parasite. Devil works in many ways. Devil steals, but God creates. Chineke. Epo Sule Yisulu. God creates, but devil steals, destroys, and disrupts. <clears throat> Devil distracts, destroys, and destructs people's life. But the grace of God gladdens our heart and grants us divine favor. 
This woman was begging the doctor. Now the, 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 this child has formed in her womb to bring that child out and put in the incubator so that she will be looking at, at her child in the incubator. The doctor was laughing at this woman. The doctor told her, your, your, your son was okay. You yourself, you are healthy and your child was healthy. There is no need for operation. I do not see any emergency. No reason to operate you. I'm just quoting the doctor. I don't see any reason to operate you and remove the child from the womb. <laughs> the woman said, Doctor, so far the child has gotten legs, hands, head, and every human feature. Please, bring out this child from my womb and put it in the incubator. Let me come and see my child. Look at that. Because she has seen a lot in her life. She has seen a lot. But the grace of God has been with her and the husband. When you are going through a lot, that's the time husband and wife should be united in prayer. When you are going through a lot to your family, that's the more reason why families will be together in their family. Do not allow the devil to come into your problem. Devil knows how to wrangle its way into your life. Do not allow the devil to come. You have to discern what is going on in your life. When the devil and negative thoughts were frustrating this woman, trying to be the parasite in her life, she stood firm. She stood firm in prayer. That's the way to fight the devil. There are people that are overwhelmed with humiliation by the people around them. Each time they do good, people repair them with evil. When he or she is happy, they are sad. When he or she is happy, they are not happy. Such people echo with Psalm 44 verse 15. All day long, my dishonor is before me. And my humiliation has overwhelmed me. But I'm telling you tonight... I'm counteracting all your humiliation and your condition with Psalm 6, verse, verse 10. And you will say with me, all my enemies will be ashamed and greatly dismayed. They shall turn back. They will suddenly be ashamed in the mighty name of Jesus. If the devil is working with your enemies, God will fight them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 45, verse 16 says, they will, put, they will be put to shame and even humiliated, all of them, the manufacturers of idols. God will fight them back. Look at that. Psalm 35, verse 4 says, Let those be ashamed and dishonored who seek your life. Let those be torn back and humiliated who devise every evil against you. Let me tell you, sometimes your co-workers or even the person working with you in the last vineyard may be used by the devil against you. But as an honest and upright man or woman, God will vindicate you. In Exodus chapter 32 verse 25 says, Moses, Moses saw that the people we are out of control, for Aaron had let them get out of control to be a derision among their enemies. Look at that. Aaron, that's supposed to work with Moses, turned around with the people to fight against Moses. You may see such things either in your area of work or even in the church. Enemies will then be employed to mock and laugh at you. 
But if I'm sure in verse 14, have an answer to such situations in your life. Let those be put to shame and humiliated together who seek my life to destroy it. Let those be turned back and dishonored who delight in my heart. Not everybody likes it when you are blessed. Some people laugh at you when they see you are downfall. Some are happy when you are grieving. Some may say, let's see at least for once what will pain this man or woman. Look at that. But I'm praying for you tonight that God will not allow the devil to use your enemies to laugh at you. You shall be happy in the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. When enemies choose to embarrass you, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 29 has something for them. Surely, you will be ashamed of the oaks which you have desired. And you will be embarrassed at the gardens which you have chosen. God fights for his people. Some people are impatient with God. When things are not moving in their own direction, they seek for other means to survive. They, let me tell you, God is a jealous God. But they end up in the ditch of failure and bewilderment, bemusement and confused. Some surrender their souls to the devil to save them, while others initiate themselves and their family at the altar of damnation. But Jeremiah chapter 2, from verse 26 to 28, has something to say about it. As the thief is shamed when he is discovered, so are the house of Israel. Put your enemies there. He's ashamed. They, their kings, their princes and their priests and their prophets who say to a tree, You are my God. Who say that they have been initiated by the, to any, any of the courts. You are my foundation. You give birth to me. Many people claim a lot of things, but the Bible is telling them that they will be humiliated. For they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. They will ask, Where are your gods which you made for yourselves? That's what God will be telling them. Where are your cults? You initiated yourself with the cults to save and protect your family. So where are those gods? Where are those cults? Let them arise. If they can save you in the time of your trouble. For according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Do not remember God only in time of trouble. This is the same reminder and warning he gave to the Israelites and the tribes of Judah. When we are honest with our adoration and worship with him, he will be there for us in time of trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus. Book of Psalm 70 verse 2 says, Let those be put to shame and humiliated who seek my life. Let those be turned back and dishonored who delight in my heart. When enemies are pursuing you, God is fighting your battle. Hosea chapter 10 verse 6 says, The sin itself will be carried to Assyria as tribute to the king Jareb. Israel will be seized with shame, and Israel will be ashamed of his own counsel. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 51 says, We are ashamed because we have heard a reproach. Disgrace has covered our faces, for aliens have entered the holy place of the house of God. When you walk with the Lord, why will you look back? When you are walking with the Lord, why do I allow devil to come into your life? Why do you allow the devil to come into your life? Why will you allow the devil to come into your life to save or protect you? 
What kind of strength does the devil have? God is bigger than all the mountains in our life. God is bigger than all the mountains in our life. God is bigger than even the Goliath in your life. All we have to do is to stand firm. All we have to do is to stand firm. To trust in the Lord. We have to trust in the Lord and the Lord will save us. As he was able to save Susan through Daniel. God can empower someone to save you and your family. You have to discern every spirit around you and your family. Don't fall prey to the devil. Look around and see the parasites in your life. Ask yourself, what is really eating, eating up my spiritual life? What is really eating up my spiritual life? What is really pulling me down that I cannot breathe? You have to disgrace the devil. You don't dance with the devil. Some people that are sick, they go to, the, 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 to, to one, one, one spirit or the other and commit yourself there. And then you empty your pocket to them. Money will run away from you. You don't have your life. You don't have your health. You come back to God. God is angry with you. You don't know where to be again. Even during the time of David, when he offended God and man, he said he would rather be with the Lord. God will know when to punish him and when to stop punishing him. Do not allow the devil to confuse you, especially when you are in the difficult situation. Always anchor your hope and faith in the Lord. When you are in the Lord, the devil will be exposed. When you are with the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will help you to discern every action in your life. Do not allow the devil to come into your life. Take in deep breath and breathe out, child of God. And present before the Lord your petitions. Tell God about the disgraces you have incurred in this life. Two so-called friends. Tell God about your disappointments. Tell God about your mistakes in life. And tell God tonight your plan, your future plan to make amends so as not to make the same mistakes. God loves you. God really loves you. Do not trust, don't, don't, do not put your trust in men and women. Put your trust in God. When you put your trust in someone, that person may not have time for you. God is timeless and created us in time. And God has time for us. Pray that God will send genuine people in your life. People that fear God. People that have compassion for each other. Keep praying. Tell God to heal your emotional trauma tonight. God is not far away from you. Remember that God gives you grace. And St. Paul says that the grace God has given you 
is sufficient for you. The devil gives disgrace, disruption, distraction, and destruction. God is with you, child of God. If you cannot go away without your shadow, how can you move away without God around you? Don't be faster than your shadow. Book of Psalm 6 verse 10 says, May all my enemies be ashamed and dismayed. They shall turn back and they shall be disgraced suddenly. God is fighting for you. Book of Psalm 35 verse 26 says, Let them be disappointed and confounded together who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. The Bible is supporting you. Book of Psalm 40 verse 14 says, Let them be disappointed and confounded together who seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be turned backward and brought to dishonor who delight in my heart. God is fighting your battle, child of God. Tonight is your night. God is fighting your battle. God is healing you. God is protecting your future. There is no witch hunting spirit or witch hunting parasite that can hurt you down. Your destiny is in God's hands. I'm in God's hands. I shall not fear. I'm in God's hands. I shall not fear. I'm in God's hands. So I shall not fear. Divine blessing is my portion. Divine blessing is my portion. He who dwells in your shelter, O Lord, is free from danger. Is free from all mommy spirit. Is free from which hunting spirit. Oh, Father, bless my children, Father. Oh, Father, bless all my children, Father. Oh, freedom from the disgrace of the enemies. Freedom from the disgrace of the enemies. Oh, Father, above, Father. We have gathered before you, Father. Let this night, O oh Lord, be a night of blessing. Let this night, O oh Lord, be a night of grace. Freedom from disgrace. Freedom from destruction. Freedom from the destruction of the enemies and their allies. O oh, Father. Abba, Father, look upon my children, look upon my children, oh, deliver them, O oh Lord, from the pains of their life, oh, deliver them, oh, oh, deliver them, oh, Father, heal their wounds, heal their wounded heart, Father, heal their relationship, Father, Heal the Lord, Father. Many are still troubled. Many are still wounded. Many are restless in their life, Father. I pray, Father, that tonight will be another night. Another night. Another night of healing. Oh, Father, let the anointing flow. Anointing of healing, anointing of healing, anointing of healing, anointing of healing, Father. Heal 
that wounded heart, heal that wounded heart, heal that wounded soul, heal that wounded soul, Father. Let him or her not die, let him survive. There is hope again, there is hope again, there is brighter future for you. Please don't die, Heavenly Father. Save their soul. Save that family from condemnation of the devil. Let this night bring them peace. Let this night bring them hope. Oh, Father. I pray that your spirit will fight our battle, Father. The paraclete, the comforter we have, will fight for you and your family will be blessed and saved. Oh, Father, take all glory and adoration. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this revelation. I thank you for this revival. I thank you for this transformation. I thank you for this transformation tonight. I pray for your blessing upon blessing upon your children. Let the anointing flow at this hour. Let the anointing of healing come upon your children from head to toe. May you, my Lord, bless everyone that will listen to this message, both home and abroad, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.